In Affinity Photo and Photoshop, you can warp an image. They have their pros and their cons. They have a lot of quirks that I will go through in this video. So how to actually create the initial warp. So in Photoshop, let's just cancel that. What you need to do is have a layer that's not locked. If it's locked, this will not work. So go to Edit and then down to Transform and then down here to Warp. You'll notice also in the trans there, the edits, you've got perspective warp, puppet warp. They're great warps, but they're not the same. So transform and warp, that's what you want. And now you can then just go up here and you can drag. You can just drag here. You can see I can just drag from the top. Now, weirdly, if you go down the bottom, it doesn't let you do it. I'm not certain why you'd think it would, but it doesn't. If you want to actually warp it, you need to click here, this dot here, this point, and then you can see you can drag up here. But it weirdly, for some weird reason, initially it doesn't let you select it. I don't know why that's the case. Maybe it doesn't work that way with yours. Now, in Affinity Photo, let's just go to Affinity. And I've got one here, so let's just cancel it. How to access it? Well, you need to, again, I've got here a background layer, but this one is actually locked, but it doesn't matter. Good thing about Finzy Photo, they realize I'm trying to warp it. Please just set it to be accessible. Photoshop doesn't seem to want you to do that. So filters and then down here to distort and mesh warp. And now you get this bounding box. That's slightly different. You haven't got any lines across it. It would be nice if it did actually initially create a couple like thirds or something, but it doesn't do that. And then you can click here and you can drag and I can go down the bottom and I can drag. Now, slightly straight away, there is a slight difference between Affinity Photo and Photoshop. The bottom part does seem to work. In Photoshop, it doesn't. Okay, next thing to do is just the application. So let's just apply it. All you need to do is Affinity Photo, just go up here. Obviously, I'm going to do more complex than this, but I'm just going to click apply. And you can see it's applied. That's it. It's done. You could also cancel as well. Now, if you go to Photoshop, and in Photoshop, slightly different. It's not over here, but it's over here. So you can just click here. Just click that, and it's done. It's processed, and you've got that. Now, there are a few differences as well. Let's just go here, edit, and undo warp, toggle the thing. You can see it's in the edit menu. You can undo it, but there is a missing feature here. There's no sort of blending between the effect, a fade feature. There isn't also in Affinity Photo, unfortunately. So if you go to Affinity Photo, let's go to Affinity Photo. In Affinity Photo to fade something, generally it's here, but it's obviously disabled. So you can't access it, but you can always, of course, just go to undo, undo mesh warp. So let's do it again. Let's just go to filters and down to distort and mesh warp. So we've got this and I can drag and then drag this and I can do the same size here. So I can just drag this in like this and I can drag this. Now, if I want to blend the effect, this mesh warp effect, best way to do it, just duplicate the layer. You can do that in Photoshop as well. So just duplicate it and then warp the duplicate and then blend it with the original. Not ideal. I don't know why. They couldn't have done it with a fade, but still, it's not there. Now, let's just add a point. So I'm just going to double click. So here, just double click. And now I've got this point in the center. And I can manipulate this. So I can just drag this up, drag this down, backwards and forwards in all kinds of ways. Now, there's no option here to do very splitting or just along a line. You get what you get here. You just double click here and you get, obviously, this. It's horizontal and you get this vertical. That's in Affinity Photo. So in Affinity Photo, you get the thing. You've got these control points. So if you click this control point, you can see, you can manipulate this. You can rotate this around. So you can just move it back and forth. You can manipulate it in all kinds of ways, just by you can see it folds over. You can rotate it backwards and forwards like that. And you can do it, go this one and do much the same. So if you want to manipulate it further, you can do that. So you can do a whole range of things. And I don't know if there's a limit to how many points you can add. So you can just see, you can just keep adding more and more. And then, of course, distort, distort it 
fairly local. So if you've got lots and lots of points in a very small area, then you're just going to really just manipulate it in a very, then you, of course, drag it right across all of them, like drag it out like that, create all kinds of weird and wonderful effects that way if you want. And you could also manipulate it here. You can rotate it just slightly in that area. That's not, it's not a twirl effect, but there's a rotation element to that. So you can just see, just rotate it like that bit. Okay. So that's in Infinity Photo. Let's go back to Photoshop now. So in Photoshop, let's just undo this. So undo and edit and again down to transform and warp. Now you've got these lines here and you think, oh, okay, I can just go here and I can just click. You can. Doesn't particularly give you any of clear reason what to suspect it would do that, but it does actually do it. Very strange, isn't it? However, if you want to, you can just drag this up, drag that. But also another thing that you can do here in Photoshop is you can click anywhere here in the center. So you can just see and drag this off backwards and forwards like that. Now, if I go back to Finity Photo and click the center, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't allow you to move that area. So you've got a slight difference there. There's some similarities, some differences. One thing you can do here, you can, of course, select multiple of these control points. You can obviously go here, hold down various things and select them. And you can then drag multiple. So you can see you can create some interesting designs. Maybe not particularly useful, but you can drag multiple ones across like that or up or down, etc., to really distort that layer. Let's go back to Photoshop. So in Photoshop, you've got this. And again, you can just drag this around. But we haven't got any points at this point other than the ones along here. So let's just, you think, oh, can I do that? Select those. Oh, it doesn't seem to be. However, we've got to add some points. Let's just go and add some points. Now, this feature is not available in Infinity Photo. Not certain why. Would be really nice. You've got the defaults here. This is the grid. So let's go to four by four. Yeah, okay. And you get that, which I think is quite nice. That feature isn't really readily available in Affinity Photo. That would be a real nice feature if they added a feature where you could set up a grid as a preset. Doesn't appear to be any option for that. I do not know why, because there's lots of presets and things in Affinity Photo that you can set up. Obviously, you probably could set a mac. I don't know, a macro maybe, whatever. But it just seems odd that they didn't add that preset feature there. Let's go back to Photoshop. Now you've got this. And what you can do, you can just select here, but you can select that one and you can select that one and you can select, you hold the shift down. Now you can't drag over unless you're outside. No, nope, you can't do that. So you have to hold down the shift. There's probably other options as well. It probably says somewhere. You can hold other things down to invert or whatever. But let's just go for the basic moving this around. So you can see, if I hold that down and hold that down, so I've got three, I've selected three now, and I can now just drag that. And you can see I can create some interesting effects by just doing this slightly different. I can drag this down, I can, so I can do much the same as in Affinity Photo as well with dragging things down. But it does come, like I say, with this additional feature of split. You don't have that in Affinity Photo, unfortunately. Let's just go back to Affinity Photo. You've got here, when you add, let's just cancel again. Let's just quickly go back. It's easier just to quickly show that. So filters, go down to distort and mesh warp and click there. And I'm just going to double click. You just get this and this. So you, you get straight away, you get that split feature. However, let's just go back to Photoshop. In Photoshop, if I, again, let's just undo that. Go back to edit, transform and warp. Sorry, I'm going backwards and forwards between them. You got the split, which does that. So here you can just hover over. I find it slightly awkward to use that because now once you've clicked it, you can't click it again and click it again, click it again. This is a bit slightly annoying, but I guess the reason being because you can edit within the center. So it just disables that. But it'd be nice if there was an option for that. You could turn it off, toggle between it, because I would like to be able to just multiple click multiple times. Having to keep go back to the split to add one is a bit of a fiddly 
thing, which I just think it doesn't make it so interactive. But you'll notice I've got this bit. It creates a horizontal and vertical, exactly as in Finti Photo. But this does have the additional one, which you may find useful. You've got here the vertical. So if I go hover over here, you can see it just creates a line down here. Not so I just click there and now I've got this line and I, it hasn't created a horizontal. And likewise, of course, I can go here and I can click there and do that. And see, I can just click there again and I can get that one. It will show you the line. So if you go there, you can see as it hovers over, you can see the line there. Now, if I warp this, let's just distort that a bit. Again, go back here. You can see now it follows the position of where it should be, which I think is quite a nice feature. And you can just click again and then you've got that and then you can warp it, of course, in a local area and so on. Just distort that a bit more. Now, you've also, another thing that's not in Affinity Photo, which you may find useful, it has got some lovely default. These are what they are, basically default. So let's just go arc and proceed. So it discards everything. Obviously, that's fairly sensible. Click OK. And then you've got that. Now you can still go back here and you can add some more. So you can distort the actual preset. It doesn't affect the preset itself, just the actual result of the preset. And you can see then you can create some interesting effects that you could, of course, create using just adding points. But the, the warps here, I think just wave. I mean, you, again, you could create them, but it's a bit fiddly. And that's what I think Finity Photo is missing. It would be nice to have some options. Now it does have an option here. Let's just go back to Photoshop. You can see here, you've got all the options here. You've got bends, which I think is quite nice. So you can, these over sort of control the preset result, which I think is great. I think it's a real nice feature. Again, of course, it hasn't got the presets like this. So the bends, the horizontal, you can squeeze it again. All these could be created by carefully setting up all the points. But I think this is just an easy way to make a very quick distortion, say of text or anything. You want to sort of have that lovely wave funnel effect. I think it's pretty good. Okay, and once you're happy with it, you can click that or you can go here, reset the warp so you can put it back to there. But you go to Infinity, there's nothing like that. But one thing Infinity Photo does have that I think is really cool. And you probably think, well, I don't know what use is that because it's just an odd feature, but it's a good feature. So source, source. You think, hmm, OK, what does that do? Well, you can double click as before, but now let's just move things around. Double click and just add lots of points. I'm just randomly. And it's one of those features where you get a feel for the sort of result you're going to get. It might not end up with that, but you get a sort of feel for that. So you can see you can add points and you can create a very complex design. Now, unfortunately, a feature that I think is lacking is lacking in Photoshop. Let's just go to Photoshop. There's no feature for you've got custom there, but you can't add your own. Wouldn't that be lovely if you could actually add them in? You've got, here, got these options here for opacity, et cetera, for the lines and things. So you can change that. But there's no, what does that, that do? Oh, yeah, it just fades that, makes it. I'm not certain I really ever used that. I never even thought about that, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, and all these sort of density, let's just change that. You can see you can create. Okay, so you've got that sort of feature. Obviously, I've faded it so much you can't see it now. Okay, let's go back to Affinity. Back to this one. This feature is not in Photoshop. I was just showing that that isn't available. But again, you can't store them, which would be lovely. Also, you've got option here, this smooth and sharp, which again is not, as far as I can see, maybe double click or something. I don't know. I'm not certain that's readily available, but please correct me if I'm wrong on that, which is quite likely. Okay, so I've got that. Now I've created this, I haven't distorted anything. You're thinking, this is strange. What am I doing? What am I doing? Well, it's using the source. And I really like this feature. Now click apply. And then you get that. Now you could, I don't think you could, particularly create it using the destination, but the source means it just distorts it without, you don't see it, but it's using it in a, a different way, a roundabout way. 
And I think it just creates a really fascinating image effects. And sometimes you don't know what you're going to get. I love that. I like this sort of weird warping of the color. I think that's just a lovely feature. Now, filters, you can repeat it. So let's just go repeat mesh warp. And you can see then you can just sort it again, repeat mesh warp, and you can really break. And you could do the same with destination option as well as a source. So you can see you can reapply it over and over again. Of course, sometimes it just ends up a bit of a, a mess. Not particularly good. So, and then you can move this around. Let's just go to layers. Now, because it's locked, you can't move it. So let's, yeah, let's move it around. So now you can move it around. See, the warp doesn't require it to be unlocked, which in Photoshop it does. So you've got this, and then you can, of course, rotate it. You've got rotation there. So you rotate it, and now filters, repeat mesh warp. And it's still applying it as before. But still, I think it's a great little feature. Now you could rasterize this. So let's just go to layer and rasterize. Once you've rasterized, now go to fill. Now it warps it slightly different because you have to rasterize it. it. If you keep trying to apply the repeat, all it did was just ignore the rotation. It's slightly odd, but you can see you can create some truly weird and wonderful designs using that feature of source. Not so easy, I think, in Photoshop. That would be very hard in Photoshop. Probably can do it somehow, but a bit tricky. So you can see you've got a lot of options here. Some good, some not so good. Is one better than the other? I don't think so. I think it's just one of those things where you're happy with how you use it. So if you've been using Photoshop and you've moved to Affinity, I think there's a lot of great features in Affinity. Just some slightly quirky features that are, you know, that weren't in Photoshop. And that, you know, you will get used to it. And vice versa. If you go from Infinity Photo into Photoshop, I'm quite certain you'll be fairly happy with it within a few minutes of just using the feature. Hope you found this of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments. Always great to hear from you. What do you think? Photoshop or Affinity Photo? Please, not opinion whether one is the greatest program or not, et cetera, et cetera, those sort of things, but how you feel with this particular effect. That'd be really great to know in the comments. Bye.